Howdy, and welcome back to the Texas Bucket List, the show that's not just dedicated to the incredible places to visit across the Lone Star State, but also the extraordinary places you can stay. And a little stop named Yurtopia checks that little box. But what exactly is a yurt? Well, that's the first question we had to get answered. The tranquil terrain of the Texas Hill Country seems to accentuate itself on the winding roads of Wimberley. The Blanco River slowly runs over its limestone riverbed, and all you can think about is finding the perfect spot to enjoy such a beautiful sight. Fortunately, we found one, simply called Utopia. So this is the Blanco River. Oh, this um, is beautiful. Yeah. The Blanco River is, I guess, a lesser known Central Texas River. <laughs> it's not the Comal or the Guadalupe, but it's um, it's great. Brian Conradi and his wife Ann Tyler are the caretakers of this paradise surrounded by the hills of Central Texas. But their lodging isn't your typical Texas style shelter. After kind of looking at the topography of the land and what our choices were, we thought about yurts. What the heck's a yurt? Most people that call at least have an idea of what a yurt is, but sometimes their girlfriend or their um, husband or somebody has seen it on Instagram and said, I'm supposed to call you to book this for our anniversary. <laughs> and um, I don't know what a yurt is, but uh, I'm supposed to, my girlfriend told me to do this. Turns out these tents are actually pretty darn romantic. So this is what a yurt is. Yep. This is Lola Gur. Okay. Why do you call it Lola Gur? Oh, Gur is Mongolian for yurt. So okay. that's Gur. Gur. And Lola, we picked a name to name each of our yurts after. Lola is actually my grandmother's nickname. Oh, very cool. Well, let's go see Lola Gur after you. All right. Come on in. Oh, this is awesome. Wow. It's uh, spacious. They're all made in Mongolia. Um, they're made of natural materials using the Mongolian techniques um, and hand painted by a family in Mongolia. So all this came from Mongolia? Yeah. These domed tents are a popular form of protection from the elements for people in Central Asia. Mostly Mongolia, of course. Mongolians have been working on this design for about 3,000 years. So they've had a lot of time to really refine what it is that they want their, their signature architectural piece to be. And this is, this is it. All the walls can collapse down. The rafters come out. There are no nails, no screws in these rafters and the walls. The walls are all made of camel hide uh, joints. Um, they're all hand hewn. You can actually see where they've steamed them and bent them along the edges. Wow. The entire structure is held up by these two posts. They're called bagan. And there's a male on the left side and a female bagan. Uh, and you know this is the female bagan because the fertility rope comes out through uh, the bagan of the, uh, the right uh, side. And uh, so that's always an interesting thing to welcome our guests with. Note, there is a fertility rope just up there coming through the right-hand bagan. This is not for escape purposes. Right, right. <laughs> Proceed at your own risk. <laughs> Do not pull the rope. I did a trip uh, with a friend uh, who was on a Habitat for Humanity trip, and we stayed in yurts there, um, families that just set up uh, summertime yurts for uh, travelers in Kyrgyzstan, and it was it was really amazing. The way you guys roll these names off your tongues is incredible. <laughs> Some people can't say Mainer or burn it. Well, that's that's tough too. I can do that because I'm from Austin. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Shake and bake. The couple is from Texas, Brian from Dallas, while Ann Tyler is from these parts. But when they got married in 1994, they went on a whim to Russia. We moved to Moscow, Russia found odd jobs in Moscow, traveled all around that area. Why Moscow? Uh, well, when you study Russian in college, uh, and Russia's just opened for the first time uh, since the Soviet Union fell apart, um, it was pretty exciting. It was a really exciting place. Well, well worth a stop on the text bucket list in Russian. How does that sound? The ocean stoit smatrit yurtopiu. Something like that. Когда в Техасе. В Техасе, да. Russian is so crazy to me. Their worldly experience played a role in constructing the crazy looking canvas structures that seemed to fit in perfect with the peaceful Texas setting. We like the marriage or blend of, of Texas and the Texas Hill Country with this kind of international aspect of what's come together with, uh, with what we've built here at Utopia. Now there's two types of yurts here. The river bluff section is down by the river and is made more for the group experience. This is great, you can just come out here you got the chairs, you got the umbrellas, you come out here with an ice cold Texas beer and just 
relax. Yeah, river sitting is, is our one of our favorite things and uh, like I said, kind of our, our pastime. Then, for the more <clears throat> private affair, there are three yurt complexes where you are completely to yourself with everything you could possibly need all in one super private place. You can come into your little sanctuary um, and hang out for the weekend or a couple days during the week and never see your neighbors. Now this little piece of heaven in the hills of Wimberley is adult only because keeping the utopia in utopia is what this place is all about. So we don't have enough yurts. We can't build too many more yurts before we've really done too much to what the property can can handle. You definitely don't want to over exert yourself. Yes, yeah, <laughs> nice. After a long peaceful sleep at Utopia, it's safe to say that it's truly an extraordinary stop on the Texas bucket list. One yurt sure to enjoy. I definitely think that Mongolians were onto something when they designed the, the yurt. There's something unique and special about it and people really do wake up and say they felt like they slept differently than they have in a long time.